California, it's common knowledge that we have to really work hard on conserving water. There's a ton of different ways that we can do that, but one of the things that I want to talk to you about is replacing your lawn. I know that that's something that people kind of cringe at the thought of doing, but let's talk a little bit about the history of lawn and how to replace your lawn and whether or not you should replace your lawn because I don't think every single lawn should be replaced. So I'm going to break it down for you. I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens and let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the history of lawn and why lawn has become such a cultural kind of icon thing here in America. L the popularity of lawns really first started in the 18th century in England where the people who could afford to have hordes of people working on their gardens had lawns as a status symbol. It showed everybody that, hey, look at me, I can grow something, I can chop it down and put a lot of work into it and just throw all that away and I don't need to do anything practical. People would see that and think, I want that and they wanted to emulate that. So it became a really popular thing. If you think about lawns, they really are incredibly wasteful, not only from water, but just the standpoint of how much work it takes, how much fertilizer we wind up using, and how much green waste we're constantly creating with them. It's something that you're fertilizing, you're watering it, you're chopping it down, and you're throwing it away. So there's a lot of different things you can do to replace your lawn or lessen your lawn space to make it a lot more water-wise and a lot more economical for your house. So the stats here in America show that only 9% of the water used in America is used by residential neighborhoods and households. And of that 9%, which is a very small slice of the pie, about 40 to 60% of that is made up from a lawn. So it is a big chunk for a house, but it's not really a huge chunk in the grand scheme of things. So let's talk about it and put it in perspective a little bit. If you have dogs, if you have kids that like to play on a lawn, I'm here to tell you to not feel guilty about that. Lawns do have a small place in a lot of homes and it's not something you have to run out and change and get rid of completely because then maybe you won't have a great space to hang out in your garden and I want to encourage everybody to get outside and enjoy nature and sometimes you need a little bit of lawn. You can probably shrink the lawn that you have. There's a lot of wasteful lawns that we have. The things that I like to call silly strips which are like the area between a sidewalk and your street for example there does not need to be lawn there no one's hanging out in that area you can easily put down some beautiful plants some stone some pebbles and then make that area a lot more easy for you because you're not mowing it and dealing with watering it as often and it won't be as much of a waste so there's probably some areas of your lawn you can definitely reduce if you're not actually hanging out on your lawn and using that space especially like along the side of the house where no one's actually going you can definitely put some of these beautiful low low care lawn replacement. So I'll break down some of the different ones that I really like to use, but really think about that stat right there. So don't feel stressed if you have a lawn that's actually being used. That's totally okay. I'm all for lawns being in schoolyards, in cemetery areas. Those are fine because they're useful lawns that we need. There are different lawn alternatives too. So if you absolutely need something you can walk on and play on all the time, think about using a warm season type lawn instead of a cool season type lawn. Right there, that'll save you about 20% of water. The warm season lawns, things like St. Augustine, which we see commonly used, take a whole lot less water than say a fescue grass. So if you are putting a lawn in, or if you do have a lawn, think about that right there. That's a great way to save a lot of water. If you decide having a lawn is not really for you, you have an area that maybe you walk on occasionally, but it's not an area that gets played on constantly. It's not an area where the dogs run through all the time, but you do want something that you can occasionally walk on. There's two things that I really love. The first one's Daimondia, the guy we have here, and Dwarf Carpet of Stars. They're both really beautiful, both very, very low water. You'll definitely cut your water uh, down by about 70% compared to what you would use on a lawn but it's really nice and lush and green which is something we still want to have in our gardens both of them have flowers so you're creating a little bit of diversity in the garden for pollinators um, but both of them 
are something you can walk on occasionally and will handle a little bit of that foot traffic. I like to use both of them together in the garden to create kind of swirls and swashes of different colors. They work really well in that way. It's nice to add a little bit of that cool gray tone because that really cools down the look of your garden, especially for all of the Mediterranean homes we have here in Southern California. If you have an olive or some agaves planted in your yard, it's really nice to recall that beautiful gray color in another spot of your garden because it gives you that continuity which we're all looking for in our landscape so these are two really great ones that you can occasionally walk on good for those silly strip areas where people are basically just getting out of their car cutting across really quickly to the sidewalk they're nice because they're very low you do not have to mow them they grow very tightly so it also helps control the weeds as well this here in front of me is Creeping Time. This is one that's kind of taken the internet by storm recently. It's gained a lot of popularity because it gets a really beautiful flower and the pollinators absolutely love it. And that's what we're trying to do also when we're replacing our lawn. It's not just about water saving, but it's also about creating more diversity in your garden so we can support all the pollinators, the butterflies, the bees. So what we're trying to do in our gardens is not only save water, but create more diversity in the garden. So there's more things for all the pollinators to actually be attracted to. That's something we've kind of gotten away with by adding all the artificial lawns and doing singular planting of just one plant over and over again. This is a really beautiful one to help bring all that in. This is not incredibly walkable, but if you're putting it in a space where you're not walking in it, this is a really great one. This is good for bordering along pathways and things like that. So if you want to add in step stones and pebbles, this is a beautiful border gorgeous gorgeous flower popular on the internet for a reason because when you see it flower it's just so awe-inspiring and it also smells great so if you do occasionally walk on it which will handle a little bit of that uh, it will smell great too because it's got that beautiful thyme smell to it as well so another of my two favorite options for a replacing lawn these ones are not walkable but they're really beautiful in areas where you're not walking on it you realize you have that space where you have a pointless lawn these are great for it I love 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 that color the blue gray of this really kind of cools down a garden as well this one here is Senecio serpens this is the shorter one you will often see this used as a ground cover uh, even in really nice like grocery stores or mall parking lots but it's the taller version I love this shorter version this is what I have planted in my silly strips in between my stepstone areas where you can walk through from your car to your sidewalk. But I really like this one because it's low and tight and incredibly low maintenance. I don't have any irrigation on it at all. I occasionally have to hand water in the summertime, but it hardly gets any water and it looks beautiful. It's super, super pretty, super easy to grow. We'll take kind of any soil except for soggy soil. And this other one is called Snow in Summer because this gets a really beautiful white flower to it uh, that's absolutely gorgeous works really well underneath roses because again it is low water so if your roses are happy this will be happy as well I love the fluffiness of this and the beautiful white flower too again those flowers bring in the pollinators which we're also trying to work on really hard here in Southern California is to create more of that biodiverse garden so these are also two really good alternatives to having pointless lawns that we don't need here in Southern California. The great thing about all of these is they're incredibly low maintenance. So no more mowing, no more blowing, no more throwing away a ton of green waste every week or every other week like you would with a lawn. It's going to cut down your water bill from a lawn area to this to about 70% of what you were once using, even less if you're going with something like this. So it's a really, really great way to reduce your water bill for yourself, do a little bit of your part, because remember, residential houses don't take up a ton of the water that we have, but we can 
work on it. But the other great thing is for pollinators too. The last thing I want you to go out and do is rip out your lawn and put in a bunch of artificial turf or put in a ton of stone. There is reasons that we should not be using those things and I think a lot of people don't really understand. The big problem with artificial turf is it's made out of plastics, it creates a lot of microplastics in the ground, and it's going to heat up that area significantly which is going to heat up your house which is going to make your energy bill go up a whole lot more and it's not recyclable it does not last for an incredibly long time i rather you have a saint augustine lawn in your house than have fake artificial turf everybody will tell you oh this will last for like 20 years it never does it always looks very worn especially if it's an area where you're walking through constantly it's just like carpet it's gonna wear when you pull it out you cannot recycle it so it's a huge amount of plastic that is going into the landfills it's the last thing you should put in the other thing I don't want you to do is just pave a whole entire area because again we're not giving anything back to all the pollinators and creating any kind of biodiversity by doing something like that it's causing a huge hot spot in your yard which is just going to raise the ambient temperature it's not going to be fun to hang out around or on so it would be much better to have a water saving turf than having these two alternatives that people think are saving water but they're just creating a lot more heat in your house so your energy bill is going up so you're kind of getting rid of one bad thing and adding another bad thing so Adding more plants in an area will definitely reduce your water usage, but also make your house cooler, make it an area that you can hang out in, making it less microplastics going into a landfill, and making a much more that you can be in. So what I hope you do when you're done watching this video is go out into your garden and kind of assess what you have in your landscape. Maybe there are areas that you can reduce your lawn. Maybe you have a really water hungry lawn like a fescue and you realize you can switch it out to a St. Augustine and reduce your water bill by 20% right there, but still have some lawn in your garden. There's a lot of different great alternatives, not just the one that I showed you that would work really well that we have here at Rogers. So you can always come in and we can help you decide where you can tweak things, how you can save uh, some water and how you can create more uh, biodiversity for all the beautiful pollinators, butterflies, birds, bees. Bring all that life into your garden and make your garden an area you really enjoy hanging out in and being in and creating something healthy for the animals and for you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. I hope this helps you out. Make sure you go check out our Instagram and our Facebook page. We have all kinds of great content there. You'll know what's going on here in the garden, what kind of fun programs and events that we're having, which are happening all the time here. You'll find out when the new plants come in, what we've got, and the things that sell out real fast, you'll know about before anybody else. We also have a really great email list that you can put your name on, on our website that shows you all kinds of great content, all kinds of things that we have not only going on here at Rogers, but at the farmhouse as well. So you'll be up to date on what's going on here at Rogers. Thank you so much. Be well, be safe, and happy gardening. Bye.